Shalom, everyone in YouTube land. Today's topic is going to be a controversial topic. But as Israelites, we should not shy away from controversial topics that are in the scriptures. I'm not going I'm not saying go around and tell everybody what to believe. Some of these so-called controversial topics in scripture are essential aspects of Torah observance. Amen. Either we serve Yahweh with our whole heart, or we pick and choose what parts of Torah and the rest of Scripture that we want to keep. Yahweh doesn't want his people, doesn't want people who want the, the easy way out. He wants believers who will endure to the end, like Yahshua said in Matthew 24, 13. Yahweh is a compassionate Elohim. Amen. Since Yahweh is a compassionate Elohim, would he give his people Israel commands that they cannot keep? First scripture is Deuteronomy 30, verse 11. For this command which I am commanding you today, it is not too hard for you, nor is it far off. The commands in the Torah are not too hard to keep. Yahweh said so in this verse. We can even see that in first first John chapter five, I believe it's verse three, in the New Testament as well. So why do some believers make keeping certain commands too hard to keep? Deuteronomy sixteen, five and six. You are not allowed to slaughter the Passover within any of your gates, which Yahweh your Elohim gives you, but at the place where Yahweh your Elohim chooses to make his name dwell. There you shall slaughter the Passover in the evening, at the going down of the sun, at the appointed time you came, you came out of Mitzrayim. There are many believers that use these verses, among others, to say, We can't keep Pesach if we are not in Jerusalem. To me, that is putting Yahweh in a box and that's the name of the video series video teaching putting Yahweh in a box we better know how to correctly observe Pesach if we don't we will be cut off our main numbers 9 verse 13 but the man who is clean and is not on a journey and has failed to perform the Passover that same being shall be cut off from among his people because he did not bring the offering of Yahweh at its appointed time, that man bears his sin. On a side note, this is the only verse in all of Scripture where the words Passover and sin appear in the same verse. And if you read it in context, it's a sin if you don't observe Passover. So, we better know how to correctly perform the Passover, whether we do it in Jerusalem, Georgia, or Jerusalem, Israel. 1 Kings 9, 1 through 9. And it came to be when Shalomo had finished building the house of Yahweh and the house of the sovereign and all the desire of Shalomo which he had pleased to do, that Yahweh appeared to Shalomo the second time as he had appeared to him at Gibbon. And Yahweh said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me. I have set this house apart, which you have built to put my name there forever. That's a key phrase. I'm reading this scripture in context. And my eyes and my heart shall always be there. Here in Kings, Yahweh said his name would dwell in Jerusalem forever. But in the following verses, he gives a disclaimer. Let's keep reading. Verse 4. And you, if, that's a big two-letter word in the context of this scripture and others, especially in the Torah. And you, if you walk before me as your father Dawid walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I commanded you, if you guard my laws and my right rulings, then I shall establish the throne of your reign over Israel forever, as I promised Dawid, the father saying, your father saying, there is not to cease a man of yours on the throne of Israel. If, here we go again, if you at all turn back, you or your sons, from following me and do not guard my commands, my laws which I have set before you, but shall go and serve other mighty ones and bow yourselves to them. Here we go. I should highlight this verse. Then I shall cut off Israel from the face of the soil which I have given them, and send, them, send away from my presence this house, 
which I have set apart for my name. And Yisrael shall be a proverb and a mockery among all the peoples. And this house which has been exalted, everyone who passes by it shall be astonished and hiss and say, Why has Yahweh done this to this land and to this house? Then they shall say, Because they have forsaken Yahweh, their Elohim, who brought their fathers out of the land of Mitzrayim. And they embraced other mighty ones, and bowed themselves to them, and served them. That is why Yahweh has brought all this evil on them. Here in Kings we have a basic Torah principle. You obey, you will be blessed. If you disobey, you will be cursed. I want to read verses 6 and 7 one more time. If, P2 letter word, if you had all turned back, you or your sons, from following me, and do not guard my commands, my laws, which I have set before you, but shall go and serve other mighty ones, and bow yourselves to them, then I shall cut off Yisrael from the face of the soil, which I have given them, and send away from my presence this house which I have set apart for my name. And Yisrael shall be a proverb and a mockery among all the peoples. And this house which has been, I'm sorry, I went a little too far. <laughs> so, if Yisrael turns back from guarding the commands, then Yahweh will remove his name from that house. That's what you see in that scripture. Has Yisrael been obedient since Shalomos day up until now? No. So, from reading, that ver reading those verses in context, it's safe to say that the Father's name does not dwell in Jerusalem anymore. All right, end of discussion. Okay, no, we shouldn't end it there. Let's keep going. See some more scriptural evidence. First Kings eleven thirty six. We'll do one verse and stay in Kings. And to his son I give one tribe, so that my servant Dawid shall always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen for myself to put my name there. First Kings nine three and this verse First Kings eleven thirty six are the basis for the belief that Yisrael can only observe certain feasts, the hog festivals, Passover, Olim Bread, Sukkot, and Shavuot, or the hogs, or the, or the pilgrimage feast. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Those two, ver those two verses in Scripture are the basis for the belief that Yisrael can only observe certain feasts in Jerusalem, or the pilgrimage feasts, one being Passover. Let's read another chapter in Kings. We're going to go to Second Kings this time, chapter 23, verses 19 through 27. A few more verses. And Yoshiau also took away all the houses of the high places that were in the cities of Shomeron, which the sovereigns of Israel had made to provoke. And he did to them according to all the deeds he did in Bethel. And he slaughtered all the priests of the high places who were there on the altars, and burned men's bones on them, and went back to Jerusalem. So we're here in Jerusalem, in this chapter. And the sovereign commanded all the people, saying, Prepare the Passover to Yahweh your Elohim, as it is written in this book of the covenant. For such a Passover had not been prepared since the days of the rulers, who ruled Yisrael, nor in all the days of sovereigns of Yisrael and the sovereigns of Yahuda. But in the 18th year of sovereign Yoshiau, this Passover was prepared before Yahuwah in Jerusalem. So here we have a Passover being observed in Jerusalem. Verse 24. And also, Yoshiau put away those who consulted mediums and spiritists and the household mighty ones and idols and all the abominations that were seen in the land of Yehuda and in Jerusalem, in order to establish the words of the Torah which were written in the book that Chilkiyahu, the priest found in the house of Yahuwah and before he before him there was no sovereign like him who turned back to Yahuwah with all his heart and with all his being and with all his might according to the Torah of Moshe and after him None rose up like him. However, Yahuwah did not turn from the fierceness of his great wrath, 
with which his wrath burned against Yehuda because of all the provocations with which Manasseh had provoked him. And Yahweh said, Even Yehuda, I shall remain, remove my presence that I have removed Yisrael, and I shall reject this city, Yerushalayim, which I have chosen. Reject Jerusalem. In the house of which I said, My name is there. Yes, Yahweh said he would place his name in Jerusalem forever, but remember the disclaimer he gave in 1 Kings chapter 9. He said he would reject Jerusalem because of disobedience, and that happened. So he did what he said he would. Has Yahweh ever lost his dwelling place? Ever left his dwelling place? Psalm 78, 54 through 60. And he brought them to the border of his set-apart place, this mountain which his ha right hand had gained, and drove out nations before them, and allotted them a measured inheritance, and made the tribes of Israel dwell in their tents. Yet they tried and rebelled against the Most High Elohim, and did not guard his witnesses. But they turned back and act acted treacherously like their fathers. They twisted like a treacherous bow, for they enraged him, with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their carved images. When Elohim heard this, he was wroth and greatly dis despised Yisrael, and he left the dwelling place of Shiloh, the tent which he had set up among men. Yes, Yahweh left his dwelling place in Shiloh. Why would Jerusalem be any different? Yisrael has a history of being disobedient. So, I have to ask the question. It's the million dollar question. Does Yahweh's name dwell in Jerusalem today? It's July 19th, 2014. So, does his name dwell there today? What did, Jer what did Jeremiah in his day have to say about that question and this topic? I'm going to go to Jeremiah 7, verses 1 through 34. Might be the whole chapter, I'm not sure, but it's important to read this one in context. Very important for this topic. The word that came to Yemiyahu from Yahweh, saying, Stand in the gate of the house of Yahweh, and you shall proclaim there this word, and shall say, Hear the word of Yahweh, all you of Yehuda, who enter in at these gates to bow before Yahweh. Thus said Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, make your ways and your deeds good. Then I let you dwell in this place. Do not trust in these false words, saying, This is the Hekel of Yahweh, the Hekel of Yahweh, the Hekel of Yahweh. For if you truly make your ways and your deeds good, if you do right ruling between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, or walk after other mighty ones to your own evil, then I shall let you dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. So you have to do something for the e forever and ever to happen. See, you are trusting in false words, which do not profit, stealing, murdering, committing adultery, swearing falsely, burning incense to Baal, and walking after other mighty ones you have not known. And you came and stood before me in this, in this house, which is called by my name, and said, We have been delivered in order to do all these abominations. Messed up. Very messed up. Or is, is, is it any different today? Verse 11. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Look, I, even I myself, have seen it, declares Yahweh. But go now to my place, Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it because of the evil of my people, Israel. And now, because you have done all these works, declares Yahweh, and I spoke to you rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear, and I called you, but you did not answer. Here we go. There's an emphasis on this verse, big time. And I shall also do to this house which is called by my name, in which you trust, and to this place which I gave to you and your fathers as I did to Shiloh. And I shall cast you out of my presence, as I have cast out all your brothers, all the seed of Ephraim. And you do not pray for this people, nor lift up a cry or pray for them, no, make intercession to me, for I do not hear you. 
Do you not see what they are doing in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Yerushalayim? The children are gathering wood, the fathers are lighting the fire, and the women are kneading their bow to make their dough, to make cakes for the sovereignness of the heaven, and to pour out drink offerings to other mighty ones to provoke me. It is me they are provoking, declares Yahweh. Is it not themselves unto the shame of their own faces? Therefore, thus said the master Yahweh, See, my displeasure and my wrath is poured out on this place, on man and on beast, and on the trees of the field, and on the fruit of the ground, and it shall be, and it shall burn and not be quenched. Thus said Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, Add your burnt offerings to your slaughterings and eat meat. For I do not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim. About, about matters of burnt offerings or slaughterings, but this word I did command them, saying, Obey my voice, and I shall be your Elohim. It's very simple. And you will be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, so that it be well with you. You walk in the Torah, you will have life. It's plain and simple. But they did not obey or incline their ear, but walked in the counsels in the stubbornness of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward, from the day that your fathers came out of the land of Mitzrayim until this day. I have even sent you all my servants, the prophets, daily, rising early, and sending them. But they did not obey me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did evil more than their fathers. You shall speak all these words to them though they did not listen to you. And you shall also cut, call to them, though they do not answer you. But you shall say to them, This is a nation that did not obey the voice of Yahweh their Elohim, nor did, the, did they accept instruction. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Truth has perished and cut off from their mouth. Wow, what a horrible place to be in. Cut off your hair and throw it away. Take up a lamentation on the bare heights. For Yahweh has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. But the children of Yehuda have done what is evil in my eyes, declares Yahweh. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to defile it. And they have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of son of Hinnom. To burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come into my heart. Therefore, see, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, when it shall no longer be called Tof Topheth, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Topheth until no room is left. And the corpses of the people shall be food for the birds of the heavens and for the beasts of the earth, with none to frighten them away. And in the cities of Yehuda, and in the streets of Jerusalem, and I shall make to cease the voice of rejoicing, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, for the land shall become a waste. I'm going to read verse 17 one more time. Do you not see what they are doing in the cities of Yehuda, and in the streets of Jerusalem? After reading this chapter, do we think Yahweh's name dwells in Jerusalem today? You have to answer that question for yourself, because salvation is a personal journey between you and the Father. The big issue for people that believe Yahweh's name dwell, dwells in Jerusalem alone is that you can only observe the pilgrimage feast in Jerusalem. And nowhere else, because that is where his name dwells. Yahu is a mer merciful <coughs> Elohim. He provides a way to observe the feast without having to go to Jerusalem. Everybody can't afford to go to Jerusalem for these three pilgrimage feasts. Yahu knows that. Their proof text is Deuteronomy chapter 16. So let's read that. I'm going to read one through... 16, I believe that's the whole chapter. I could be wrong. Verse 1. Guard the month of Abib and perform the Passover to Yahweh 
your Elohim, for in the month of Abib, Yahweh your Elohim, your Elohim brought you out of Mitzrayim by night. Let's point out that coming out of Mitzrayim is very important. The scriptures, especially the Torah, keep pointing back to coming out of Mitzrayim, coming out of Mitzrayim. So we need to pay it close attention whenever that's mentioned when we're reading our scriptures, especially the Torah. Father wants us to pay close attention and really appreciate the fact that we came out of Mitzrayim. And you shall slaughter the Passover to Yahweh, Yahweh from the flock and from the herd in the place where Yahweh chooses to put his name. There you go. There's the key words. Eat no leavened bread with it. For seven days you eat unleavened bread with it. Bread of affliction because you came out of the land of Mitzrayim in haste. And again. So that you remember the day in which you came out of the land of Mitzrayim all the days of your life. And no leaven should be seen with you in all your borders for seven days. Neither should any of the meat which you slaughter in the evening on the, on the first day stay all night until morning. You are not allowed to slaughter the Passover within any of your gates, which Yahweh, your Elohim, gives you. Another key verse for folks that believe that. And six. But at the place where Yahweh, your Elohim, chooses to make his name dwell, there you shall slaughter the Passover in the evening. At the going down of the sun, at the appointed time, you came out of Mitzrayim. You shall roast and eat in the place where, which Yahweh, your Elohim, chooses to and in the morning you shall turn and go to your tents. Six days you eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day, there's a closing festival to Yahweh, your Elohim. You do no work. Count seven weeks for yourself. Begin to count seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the grain. You shall perform the festival of weeks to Yahweh, your Elohim, according to the voluntary offering from your hand, which you gave as Yahweh, your Elohim, blesses you. And you shall rejoice before Yahweh, your Elohim, you and your son and your daughter, your female servant, your male servant, your female servant, the lay wheat, who's within your gates, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow who are in your midst, at the place where Yahweh, your Elohim, chooses to make his name dwell. You shall remember that you were a slave in Mitzrayim, and you shall guard and do these laws. Perform the festival of booths for seven days after the ingathering from your threshing floor, and from your wine press. You shall rejoice in your festival, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, the lay wheat, and the stranger and the fatherless and widow who are within your gates. For seven days you shall observe a festival to Yahweh, your Elohim, in the place which Yahweh chooses, because Yahweh, your Elohim, does bless you in all your increase, and in all the work of your hands. You shall be only rejoicing. Three times a year all your males appear before Yahweh, your Elohim, in the place which he chooses, at the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, the festival of booths, and none should appear before Yahweh empty handed. So he received three pilgrimage feasts, and Yahweh wants us to observe them where he chooses to make his name dwell. The funny thing about believers that use verses 5 and 6 to say we can't keep the Passover because we aren't in Jerusalem. But they still keep Shavuot and Sukkot in America, not in Jerusalem. How come they don't use the same argument for Shavuot and Sukkot? That's because there's a lot of controversy that surrounds Passover. There isn't any controversy surrounding the observance of Shavuot or Sukkot. Here are a couple questions to ponder on. Why are all the feasts not mentioned in Deuteronomy 16? Why would Yahweh say to observe some of the feasts where his name dwells and not the rest? Why does Yahweh not say to observe the feasts where his name dwells in Leviticus 23, where all the feasts are listed? Deuteronomy 12, 17-21 You are not allowed to eat within your gates the tithe of your grain or your new wine or of your oil or the first things of your herd or flock or any of your offerings which you vow, or your voluntary offerings, or the contribution of your hand. But eat them before Yahweh your Elohim in the place which Yahweh your Elohim chooses. You or your, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant and female servant, your lay wheat who is within your gates, you shall rejoice before Yahweh your Elohim in all that 
you put your hands to. Guard yourself that you do not forsake to lay weak as long as you live in your land. When Yahweh your Elohim enlarges your border as he has promised, and you say, Let me eat meat, because you long to eat meat. You eat as much meat as your being desires. Here we go. It's a key verse right here. When the place where Yahweh your Elohim chooses to put his name is too far from you. Excuse me, my phone's ringing. Turn that off. I'm going to keep going since I'm this far into it. Verse 21. When the place where Yahweh, your Elohim, chooses to put his name is too far from you, then you shall slaughter from your herd and from your flock, which Yahweh has given you. As I have commanded you, you shall eat within your gates as much as your being desires. So here in verse 21, we see the Father's mercy for those who could not make it to the place where he put his name, or he chose to put his name. He shows mercy. Don't put him in a box. What about Joshua chapter 8? 28 through 31, just a few verses. Joshua burned Ai and made it a heap forever, a ruin to this day. And he hanged the sovereign of Ai on a tree until evening. And at sunset, Joshua commanded that they should take his corpse down from the tree and throw it at the entrance of the gate of the city and raise over it a great heap of stones to this day. Yahshua built an altar to Yahweh Elohim of Israel and Mount Ebal. As Moshe the servant of Yahweh had commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the Torah of Moshe, <coughs> an altar of unhewn stones over which no man has wielded iron, and they offered it Offered on it burnt offerings to Yahweh and slaughtered peace offerings. Was this where Yahweh made his name to dwell? There is no mention of Jerusalem in this chapter. Let's look at another proof text for Yahweh's name only dwelling in Jerusalem. Second Chronicles 6, 5 and 6. From the day that I brought, brought my people out of the land of Mitzrayim, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house for my name to be there. Nor did I choose any man to be a leader over my people, Yisrael. But I have chosen Yerushalayim for my name to be there. And I have chosen Dawi to be over my people, Yisrael. Let's go to the next chapter. We're going to read 16 through 22. And now I have chosen and set this house apart for my name to be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall always be there. And you, if, oh, there we go, there's an extremely large two-letter word again. And you, if you walk before me as your father Dawid walked, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you guard my laws and my right rulings, then I shall establish the throne of your reign, as I covenant with Dawid, your father, saying, there is not to cease a man of yours as ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my laws and my commandments, my commands, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other mighty ones and bow yourself to them, then I shall pluck them from my land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have set apart for my name, I shall cast out my sight and make it a proverb and a mockery among all peoples. I think we read a similar verse with similar verbiage earlier. Verse 21. And this house which has been exalted, everyone who passes by it shall be astonished and say, Why has Yahweh done this to this land and to this house? Then they shall say, Because they forsook Yahweh Elohim of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim, and embraced other mighty ones and bowed themselves to them, and served them. Therefore he has brought all this evil on them. He brought this evil on them because of their disobedience. Again, he is given a disclaimer about where his name dwells. I want to read verses 19 and 20 one more time. But if you turn away and forsake my laws and my commands which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other mighty ones and bow yourselves to them, then I shall pluck them from my land which I have given them, 
In this house which I have set apart for my name, I shall cast out of my sight and make it to be a proverb and a mockery among all peoples. Again, has Israel been obedient ever since these verses in Scripture were written? No, they have not. So if Yahweh is the Elohim of his word, which he is, then what do we do with these verses if we believe his name only dwells in Jerusalem? Here are some examples of altars where burnt offerings were made to Yahweh that were not in Jerusalem. And this is in the chapter of the, the quote, Ten Commandments. But this is past the, the Ten Commandments, and I, I, I personally think, just from reading it, there's more than Ten Commandments in that, in that chapter. This is Exodus 20, verses 24 and 25. Make an altar of earth for me, and you shall slaughter on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your cattle. Here we go. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I shall come to you and bless you. And if you make me an altar of stone, do not build it of cut stone, for if you use your chisel on it, you have profaned it. Let me read the last part of 24 again. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered. Nowhere in these verses does it say Jerusalem or where his name dwells. What's up with that? Deuteronomy 27, 5 through 7. And build an altar to Yahweh, your Elohim, there. An altar of stones, do not use an iron tool on them. Build the altar of Yahweh, your Elohim, with complete stones, and you shall offer burnt offerings on it to Yahweh, your Elohim, and shall offer peace offerings, and eat there, and rejoice before Yahweh, your Elohim. More of the same. Judges 6, 24-26. And Gidon built an altar there to Yahweh, and called it Yahweh Shalom. Peace. To this day, it is still in Ophrah of the Abizarites. Say that six times fast. And the same night it came to be that Yahweh said to him, Take the young bull of your father and the second bull of the seven years old, and you shall throw down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the Asherah that is beside it. You shall build an altar to Yahweh, your Elohim, on top of the, this rock in an orderly way, and shall take the second bull and offer a burnt offering with the wood of the image which you cut down. Let's keep going. More examples. 1 Samuel 14, 35. And Shaul built an altar to Yahweh. It was the first altar he built to Yahweh. The first altar he built. So, insinuating there are more than one. 2 Samuel 24, 11 through 25. And Dawid rose up early in the morning, and the word of Yahweh came to the prophet God. Dawid seer, saying, Go, and you shall speak to Dawid, thus said Yahweh. I hold three options before you. Choose one of them, and I do it to you. God then came to Dawid and informed him, and he said to him, Should seven years of scarcity of food come to you in your land, or would you flee three months before your enemies while you, they pursue you? Or should there be three days plague in your land? Now, now know and See what answer I take back to him who sent me. And Dawid said to God, I am in great trouble. Please let us fall into the hand of Yahweh, for his compassion is great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. And Yahweh sent a plague upon Israel from the morning to the appointed time, and from dawn to Beersheba, 70,000 men of the people died. And the messenger stretched out his hand over Jerusalem to destroy it. And Yahweh relented concerning the evil, and said to the messenger who was destroying the people, It is enough. Now stop your hand. And the messenger of Yahweh was by the threshing floor of, uh, it's fun trying to pronounce his name, Arwanah, the Yebusite. And, the, and Dawid spoke to Yahweh when he saw the messenger who was smiting the people and said, See, I have sinned, and I have done perversely, but these sheep 
What have they done? Let your hand, I pray, be against me and against my father's house. And God came to that came that day to Dawid and said to him, Go up, raise an altar to Yahweh on the threshing floor of Arwanah, the Yebushite. And Dawid, according to the word of God, went up as Yahweh had commanded. And Arwanah looked and saw the sovereign and his servants coming toward him. And Arwanah went out and bowed before the sovereign with his face to the ground. And Arwanah said, Why is my master, the sovereign, come to be his servant? Come to his servant. And Dawid said, To buy the threshing floor from you to build an altar to Yahweh, so that plague be withdrawn from the people. And Arwanah said to Dawid, Let my master, the sovereign, take and offer that which seems good to him. Here are cattle for burnt offering and threshing implements and the yokes of the cattle for wood. And these, O sovereign, Arwanah has given to the Sovereign. And I will not said to the sovereign, Yahweh, your Elohim, accept you. And the sovereign said to Awana, No, let me buy it from you for a price for certain. I am not offering burnt offerings to Yahweh, my Elohim, without cost. So Dawid bought the threshing floor and the cattle for fifty shekels of silver. And Dawid built an altar to Yahweh there, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and Yahweh answered the prayers for the land. And the plague was withdrawn from Israel. Yahweh was judging Israel with the plague. And what did he command David to do to stop the plague? Build an altar. This is not the place where Yahweh made his name to dwell. Jeremiah 26, 2 through 12. Just a few verses, not many. Let's say Yahweh, stand in the courtyard in the house of Yahweh and speak to all the cities of Yehuda, which come to bow themselves in the house of Yahweh. All the words that I command you to speak to them, do not diminish a word. If so be that they listen and each turn from his evil way, then I shall repent of the evil that I plan to do to them because of the evil of their deeds. And you shall say to them, Thus said Yahweh, if you do not listen to me, to walk in my Torah which I have set before you, to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets I am sending you, even rising up early and sending them, though you have not listened. Here we go. Then I shall make this house like Shiloh and make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. And the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Yermiyahu speaking these words in the house of Yahweh. And it came to be. When Yahweh who ended speaking all that Yahweh had commanded him to speak to all the people, that the priest and the prophets and all the people seized him, saying, You shall certainly die. Why have you prophesied in the name of Yahweh, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city be dried up without an inhabitant? And all the people were gathered against Yahweh in the house of Yahweh. And the heads of Yehuda heard this, and they came up from the sovereign's house to the house of Yahuwah. Yahuwah sat down in the entrance of the new gate of the house of Yahuwah. And the priests and the prophets spoke to the heads and all the people, saying, A death sentence for this man, for he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your ears. And Yahuwah spoke to all the heads and all the people, saying, Yahweh sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city with all the words you heard. More evidence he took his name out of Jerusalem. Some believers believe that we, don't, we can't do the three pilgrimage feasts because we aren't where Yahweh's name dwells. But yet, they live in America and pay their tithe. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Don't we have to pay our tithes where his name dwells? Let's go back and look at Deuteronomy 12 again. Verse 11. And it shall be that unto the place which Yahweh your Elohim chooses to make his name dwell there, there you are to bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your offerings and your tithes. There you go. And the contributions of your hand and all your choice offerings which you vow to Yahweh. We can see more of the same in Deuteronomy 14, 23. 
You shall eat before Yahweh your Elohim in the place where he chooses to make his name dwell. The tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil of your first links of your herds and your sheep so that you learn to fear Yahweh your Elohim always. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we should not pay our tithes. I'm saying that if someone believes we don't we can't do certain feasts because we don't live where his name dwells, then why do they pay tithes when they don't live where his name dwells? That doesn't make a lot of sense. If we're going to walk in the Torah, we need to be consistent. Next verse of scripture is Ezekiel 1 through 8. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate of the house of Yahweh, which faces east, obviously. And see, at the door of the gate were twenty-five men, among whom I saw Yazaniah, son of Azur, and Pilet Yahu, son of Benet Yahu, heads of the people. And he said to me, Son of man, these are the men who plot wickedness and give evil counsel in this city, who are saying, It is not near. Let us build houses. This city is the cooking pot, and we are the meat. Hello. That's an idiom for you. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. <clears throat> and the spirit of Yahweh fell upon me and said to me, Speak. Thus said Yahweh, Thus you have said, O house of Israel, for I know what comes up in your spirit. You have increased your slain in this city and filled it with streets with the filled its streets with the slain. <coughs> Excuse me. Therefore thus said the master, Yahweh, your slain whom you have laid in its midst, <coughs> they are the meat, and this city is the cooking pot but I shall bring you out of the midst of it. You have feared the sword, and I bring a sword upon you, declares the master, Yahweh. Usually, when a sword is bring, brought on Israel, he is bringing judgment. You can see that in Matthew ten thirty four, 34, when the Messiah said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Yahweh does use other ways to judge, like fire and brimstone. But usually, when he says he's bringing a sword, he is bringing judgment. So let's keep reading verse 9, Ezekiel 11. And I shall bring you out of its midst, and give you into the hands of strangers, and execute judgments on you. By the sword you fall, at the border of Israel I judge you. You shall know that I am Yahweh. This city is not your cooking pot, nor are you the meat in its midst. At the border of Israel I judge you. And you shall know that I am Yahweh, for you have not walked in my laws, nor executed my right rulings, but have done according to it to the rulings of the Gentiles, which are all around you. And it came to be while I was prophesying that Pelet Yahu, son of Benayah, died. And I fell on my face and cried out with a loud voice and said, Ah, Master Yahweh, are you making an end of the remnant of Israel? Then the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, your brothers, your relatives, your kinsmen, and all the house of Israel, all of it, are those about whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Keep far from Yahweh. This land has been given to us as a possession. Therefore say, Thus said the master Yahweh, Although I have sent them far off among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the lands, yet, pay attention to this, this sentence, Yet I was for them a set-apart place for a little while in the lands to which they came. Therefore say, thus said the, the Master Yahweh, And I shall gather you from the peoples, and I shall assemble you from the lands where you have been scattered, and I shall give you the land of Israel. And they shall go there, and shall take away all of its disgusting matters and all its abominations from there. And I shall give them one heart, and put a new spirit within them, and I shall take the stony heart of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh, so that they walk in my laws and guard my right rulings, and shall do them, and they shall be my people, and I shall be their Elohim. But to those whose hearts walk after their 
the heart of their disgusting matters and their abominations, I shall recompense their deeds on their own heads, declares the Master Yahweh. One read verses 15 and 16 one more time. Son of man, your brothers, your relatives, your kinsmen, and all the house of Israel, all of it, are those about whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Keep far from Yahweh. This land has been given to us as a possession. Therefore say, Thus said the Master Yahweh, Although I have sent them far off from among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the lands, yet I was for them a set-apart place for a little while in the lands to which they came. Yahweh's name dwells where his people are, not just in Jerusalem. Some of what I've said today might be taken out of context. I'm not saying it is wrong to go to Jerusalem or wrong to seek the place where his name dwells. I am saying that Yahweh is a merciful Elohim and will allow us to keep the feast and pay our tithes at places other than Jerusalem. Yahweh tells us in his Torah to seek the place where his name dwells. Deuteronomy 12, 5. But seek the place which Yahweh, your Elohim, chooses out of all the tribes to put his name there for his dwelling place, and there you shall enter. Let's look at other examples of folks in the scriptures that built altar to Yahweh. Noah built an altar to Yahweh. Genesis 8, 20 through 22. And Noah built an altar to Yahweh and took of every clean beast and of every clean bird and built and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And Yahweh smelled a soothing fragrance. And Yahweh said in his heart, Never again shall I curse the ground of the ground because of man. Although the inclination of man's heart is evil from his youth, and never again smite all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Noah built an altar to Yahweh and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Guess what was not mentioned in these verses? Jerusalem! Abraham built an altar to Yahweh. Genesis 6, Genesis 12, 6-8. And Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth trees of Moreh. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. And Yahweh appeared to Abram and said, to your seed I give this land. And he built there an altar to Yahweh, who had appeared to him. And from there he moved to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And he built there an altar to Yahweh and called on the name of Yahweh. The next chapter, verse 18. So Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron and built an altar there to Yahweh. Abraham built two altars to Yahweh, and both were in Canaan, Canaan, not in Jerusalem. Yaakov built an altar to Yahweh. Genesis 35, 6 and 7. And Yaakov came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there El their Elohim appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. I know this is beating a dead horse, but once again, someone builds an altar to Yahweh, and there is no mention of Jerusalem. The word altar appears 321 times in the scriptures, so we would be here a long, for a long time if I went over all of them. But let's look at one more. 1 Kings 18 31 through 39. And Eliyahu took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Yaakov, to whom the word of Yahuwah, Yahuwah had come, saying, Yisrael is your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of Yahuwah. And he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two sehas of seed. And he arranged the wood and cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood and said, Fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Then he said, Do it a second time. And they said, And they did it a second time. And he said, Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. And the water flowed around the altar. And he filled the trench with water too. 
And it came to be at the time of bringing the evening offering that Eliyahu, the prophet, came near and said, Yahweh, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yisrael, let it be known today, you are Elohim and Yisrael, and I, your servant, have done all these matters by your word. Answer me, O Yahweh. Answer me, and let this people know that you are Yahweh, Elohim. And you shall turn their heads back to you again. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust. And it licked up the water that was in the trench. And all the people saw and fell on their faces and said, Yahweh, he is Elohim. Yahweh, he is Elohim. This occurred when there was a temple to do sacrifices. Yahweh blessed many people in the scriptures that built an altar to him that were not in Jerusalem. So, what exactly happened in Shiloh, where he put his name at the first? To fully understand what happened in Shiloh, you need to read chapters 4 through 7 in 1 Samuel to get the whole picture of the story. Basically, the priesthood was corrupt, and like usual, Yisrael was in a state of idolatry or disobedience. The high priest, Eli, was being punished by Yahweh for not correcting the sins of his son, sons, plural. So he had two messed up boys. Plus, the Philistines brought the ark onto the battlefield and out of the most set-apart place, which defiled the temple, and the most set-apart place, which was, which was where he dwelled. So we're going to read a little bit out of 1 Samuel 4, 10 through 22. Not going to read all that I mentioned. And the Philistine, Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, and every man fled to his tent, and the slaughter was very great. And there fell of Israel thirty thousand foot soldiers. And the ark of Elohim was captured, and the sons of Eli, Chofni, and Pinchas, both sons died. And a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to Shiloh with his garments torn and dirt on his head. And he came in and saw Eli. Sitting on a seat by the wayside, watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of Elohim. And the man came into the city and reported it, and all the city cried out. And Eli heard the noise of the outcry and said, What is the noise of this uproar? And the man came hastily and informed Eli. Now Eli was ninety-eight years old, and his eyes were so dim that he was unable to see. And the man said to Eli, I am he who came from the battle. And I fled today from the battle line. And he said, What was the matter, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people, and your two sons have died, Hophni and Phinehas. And the ark of Elohim had been captured. And it came to be, when he made mention of the ark of Elohim, that Eli fell off the seat backward by the side of the gate. And his neck was broken, and he died. For the man was old and heavy, and he ruled Israel forty years. And his daughter-in-law, Pinehas' wife, was pregnant, about to bear. And when she heard the news that the Ark of Elohim was captured, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and gave birth, because her pains came upon her. And about the time for her death, the woman who stood by her said to her, Do not fear, for you have born a son. But she did not answer, nor did she set her heart to it. And she called the child Ichabod, saying, The esteem has departed from Israel, because the ark of Elohim was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The esteem has departed from Israel, for the ark of Elohim was taken. Yahweh's name departing, and his esteem departing go hand in hand. We can see an example of Yahweh's name dwelling here, dwelling where his name, where his esteem is in Exodus. Exodus 33, 17 through 23. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Even this word you have spoken I shall do. For you have found favor in my eyes, and I know you by name. Then he said, Please show me your esteem. And he said, I shall cause all my goodness to pass before you. And I shall proclaim the name of Yahweh before you. And I shall favor him 
who my favor and shall have compassion on him whom I have compassion. But he said, You are unable to see my face, for no man does see me and live. Yahweh said, See, there is a place with me, and you shall stand on the rock, and it shall be while my esteem passes by, that I shall put you in the cleft of the rock, and cover me with my hand while I pass by. Then I shall take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Let's continue in chapter 34, Exodus. And in verse 7. Yahweh said to Moshe, Cut two tablets of stone like the first first ones. And I shall write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. And be ready in the morning, and you shall come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. And let no man come up with you, and let no man be seen in all the mountain. And let not even the flock or the herd feed in front of that mountain. And he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. Then Moshe rose early in the morning and went up Mount Sinai, as Yahweh had commanded him. And he took two tablets of stone in his hand. And Yahweh came down in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name Yahweh. And Yahweh pressed before him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh, and Elohim, and El, compassionate, showing favor, patient, great in kindness and truth, watching over kindness for Thousands forgiving crookedness and transgression and sin, but by no means leaving unpunished, visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. From these verses of scripture, we can see Yahweh's name dwells where his esteem is. Does everybody remember the name of Pinchas' son in 1 Samuel chapter 4? It's Ichabod. Does anybody know what that name means? means no esteem. Hebrew names are, are so amazing. A lot of times in scripture there are meanings, the meaning of names fit perfectly to what's going on. Shiloh was supposed to be a reminder, a reminder of what happened where Yahweh made his name dwell first. And what happened and what will happen if Israel turns their back on Yahweh? What would happen to Jerusalem and the temple. Okay, let's say hypothetically, if Yahweh's name does dwell in Jerusalem right now in 2014, let's take a look at some, some of the things that go on in Jerusalem. I want to read an online article. The name of the article is Israel's Abortion Law Now Among World's Most Liberal. I'm just going to read one paragraph. I think this one paragraph is enough. Yisrael has always had a liberal stance on abortion, allowing women facing medical emergencies or those who are victims of rape or abuse to receive subsidies to help them terminate their pregnancies. Outside of these regulations, women can apply for abortions for reasons ranging from an emotional or mental threat caused by the pregnancy or, here you go, here's the manifestation of sin right here, or for not being married to the baby's father. All women who seek to end a pregnancy must appear before a three-member committee to state their case, but 98, let me say that again, 98% of requests are approved. Women under the age of 20 or above the age of 40 were also previously eligible for subs subsidized abortions, regardless of the reason. So, don't need to say much about much more about that. Only two percent are turned down of ninety-eight percent. How about this? Gay pride parades happen every year in the city of Jerusalem, Yisrael. They happen in America. They happen in Tel Aviv. They happen in any country that's liberal. But most of the Middle Eastern countries won't allow that. But it does. It happens here in America. But it happens in Jerusalem, Israel, and it's happened for around tw the last twelve or thirteen years. You can go online. Go online. And type in Jerusalem, Israel, gay pride parade. You'll find all kind of stuff. Be careful to do that if you have kids around.
when you do it. So, with gay pride parades currently happening in Jerusalem, Israel, I have to ask this question. Did Yahweh's name dwell in Sodom and Gomorrah? Because that was a big part. They were very evil. There's a lot of unrighteousness and abominations and sin going on. But one part of it was homosexuality. You can see that in the Torah in Genesis with, with Lot. So, I'm asking again. Did Yahweh's name dwell in Sodom and Gomorrah? Then how can we say his name dwells in Jerusalem when the same things occur in Jerusalem today that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah back then? Yes, someone might say homosexuality occurs in America too, so Yahweh's name doesn't dwell in America either. Yahweh's name dwells where his people are, and his people are scattered all over the world. His people are not just in Jerusalem, Israel. I attend a congregation almost every Shabbat, and I believe with all my heart, Yahweh is there with us. I believe his name dwells there. Because we keep it set apart, we keep his feast, we wear his eat deeds, we eat clean, and we don't call on the name of other mighty ones. Yahweh does not dwell with the unrighteous, he dwells with the righteous. Right now in Jerusalem, there is Catholicism and Islam with their idols dedicated to the worship of other mighty ones. On top of that, there are Jews in Jerusalem that won't allow the name of Yahweh to be called upon, which is totally against Scripture. There are plenty of Scriptures that tell us to call upon the name of Yahweh, Joel 2.32 specifically, and it's the key ingredient for salvation. Does Yahweh dwell in a place with all that Torahlessness going on? Here's a question we must ask ourselves. And think about it. Is Yahweh locked into a legal technicality forcing him to stay in a defiled place since he said his name would dwell there forever? I'm going to say that again. Think about it. After you watch the video, just ponder on this question. Is Yahweh locked into a legal technicality forcing him to stay in a defiled place since he said his name would dwell there forever? Remember in 1 Kings 9, he gave a disclaimer about where he put his name to dwell. We have to make a choice with the observance of Passover. Either we can try and do our dead level best to be obedient to the command and maybe get something wrong, or we can, or we cannot try at all and get it all wrong. And Pat, and I need to remind you, Passover is a cut off offense, among others. But Passover is, and it's the only command in all of Scripture where you get a second opportunity. If for some reason you're unclean or you're off on a journey, you get a second opportunity. You don't get that with any of the other feasts. Yahweh knows our hearts. Either we serve Him, or we don't. Shalom.